Why, hello everyone, and welcome to my new Let's Play. Attention all units. Suspect seen heading south. Block all major roads and capture yeah. the suspect. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, I'm not actually going to do Sonic Adventure 2. Maybe, maybe one day. Possibly one day, but this Let's Play is actually going to be dedicated to Resident Evil. Evil Four. That's that's right. It's gonna be some awesome, juicy, fun going to be with this let's play. After a huge hit and how much fun it was to record the last play, I decided to start a brand new one right away. Just get right into it because this is extremely fun. Extremely. I don't know, just everyone seems to enjoy it. And yeah, so this is gonna be a little difficult here because with Resident Evil Four. Uh, there might be some of you that actually might know like the whole history of Resident Evil 4 and all that kind of good stuff. Or you might even played Resident Evil 4 yourself. But for the people that have no idea like what the Resident Evil series is, or even like even the fourth game or any of that kind of do I'm gonna do a very, very brief history and I'm gonna do my best to try to explain it. But and if you want to, because some people are I know some people out there are really like not anal, but they really want to know like the backstory before you get into like a later game. Um, what I have to do it. What I have to do is say is, Resident Evil 4. It links to the previous Resident Evil games, but not as much as directly as you would think. And I'll kind of explain that a bit. Because Resident Evil 4 has a lot of original characters and original kind of storyline plot. It doesn't it has something to do with previous games, but not as much as not as much as intended. So. We're first going to go back to the first Resident Evil, which was for the PlayStation 2, and that came out in 1996 on the yeah, PS2. So, basically, the the events of Resident Evil, how they start off with, with everything, was basically there were some missing people, some trouble that happened in a city called Wrecking City. And there was, like, a, a bunch of, like, members of, like, police forces that randomly went missing, so... There's a group, there's a elite group called the STARS members, STARS, I'm not STARS members, but STARS, which is Special Tactics and Rescue Services, which is a special elite division under jurisdiction of Raccoon City Police Department, which is like, obviously, the police department of Raccoon City. And basically, they're, bun they're filled with a bunch of ex-military personnel and academic civilians for like, like, really good, like, strong brains and just stuff like that. But anyways, so, part of this group was, in fact, uh, two members that you play as, which is Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. So basically, it's up to you. The point of the game is kind of figure, like, what's going on, like, what's happening, what's happening to all these people, what's going on in Rackin City. So, as the plot progresses, you do find out that, how, that all this causing of, like, the zombies is from this outbreak called the T-Virus. T virus is basically the T virus was developed by the Umbrella Corporation, which is, which was basically a huge pharmaceutical company that did a bunch of stuff internationally. There, but they were under under the table. They were trying to develop like uh, bio weapons of sorts, and they created this T virus, which alternated your DNA, turned you into a zombie. So. You probably heard of the T virus before, either seen it in like the movies, or just heard it in general. Um, by the way, movies and the games have nothing in common. Like, they might have like a ba same basic story, but they don't actually inter interconnect each other, unless you've seen some of like the last Resident Evil movies, which that's another time to talk about. So, again, so you learned that Umbrella is basically developed this T-Virus that unleashed this horrendous, horrific events that happened in Rackin City with all these zombies coming out of nowhere, and basically you learn that uh, someone part of the Star Team's member, which is Stars, is Albert Wesker. He's working as a double agent for Umbrella. So basically you learn that he's uh, behind uh, all this, basically he's kind of like the main, the main guy who's kind of been like double double crossing your team even though he's been seemed like he was helping he was not so that's kind of like what happened in the first Resident Evil that's kind of what you learn then you move on to Resident Evil 2 I oh, also learn about Barry and stuff but they don't 
they don't matter for Resident 4. But you can, again, look up more of this. Because there is a lot of information, which I'm not going to talk about. But just the basics. So then the events of Rockman City 2, which happened two months after the events of first Resident Evil. Which come in the characters of Leon S. Kennedy, which is the main protagonist of Resident 4. So Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield, which is the... They... Okay. Leon S. Kennedy is a rookie police officer on his first day of the local forest. So, basically, he was sent into Rackin City on his first day of the force as a rookie. So, I kind of feel bad. For, you got you got to feel bad for Leon, because, you know, just start up a new day, drop all of a sudden, boom, zombie. So, basically, yeah. And then you got Claire Redfield, who is looking for her brother, Chris Redfield, because they went missing. They did have... They, go, they went missing after the first Resident Evil, so... You're trying to learn, like, what the hell's going on. So basically, you're just trying to help each other. And throughout the throughout the events of Resident Evil 2, Leon encounters Ada Wong. Ada Wong, which is also another main character in Resident Evil 4. And their relationship is that Leon really finds, like, emotion for Ada Wong, even though Ada Wong is, doesn't really care too much for Leon. He, well, she's trying to find... She claims she's trying to find her boyfriend... An umbrella researcher, so that's basically what happens there. And they also, uh, there's also a new virus that's found called the G virus, which is um, capable of making zombies into like ultimate bioweapons. And yeah, so there's, uh, there's a lot of deals going on with that and uh, stuff like that. So basically, they, they make it alive, I'm pretty sure. Um, Claire finds her brother, but not exactly sure. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold the phone! Alright, so, also the events of Resident Evil 2. Um, after all that, um, Sherry. There's a little girl named Sherry. Who, uh, they swore to protect and help them help this little girl as they're unsure about what's going on. Sherry is actually... Sherry's mother is basically a wife of Umbrella, Umbrella Sentus who created the G-Virus. So Ada Wong is very... very, like... It's like very interested about this G-Virus. So she tries everything she can to kind of get more information about that. So that's why she's kind of getting really close to Leon. Saying like, yeah, I'll help you and we're in this together, and Leon's like, okay, I'll protect you, I swear an oath, sort of thing, going on. So thus, you learn that Ada is actually double agent two, working for an unknown organization, trying to steal the G-Virus information, like I said, so... That all happens, and it's really kind of confusing, so you can look up that too. I probably didn't explain that the best way, but... And in the end, Leon swore to bring down Umbrella for causing all this huge, huge mess. And, yeah, but they do escape. Leon and... Leon and Sherry escape while Claire stays to, uh... Stays to try to help find her, uh... Her brother still, so... That's the end of Resident Evil 2. So basically, they make it alive while... Yeah. And then, thus, moving over to the third game, which is Resident Evil 3, Nemesis. So Nemesis is basically this, like, super biological weapon that was, uh, develops and chases you throughout the game. So it's kind of, kind of scary. But basically this takes, you basically play as Javon Time, just like you did in the first game. You try to, uh, you're basically trying to escape the area, so... Again, this is all kind of confusing, but um, basically, just pretty much escape. This takes this begins like right after the events of Resident Evil 2, by the way. All right, and thus everyone meet, finds each other, and the government decides this is completely out of control. Like, there's so many zombies within Raccoon City that they just need to. They're plan was to nuke nuke the nuke the city so 
they have to make sure they get out of the city before they get nuked. So Jill has to get the frick out of there before the whole city gets nuked while she's still in it. So basically she spends the whole the rest of the game trying to do that. And thus, in the end, Jill escapes just as Raccoon City has been nuked. Killing at least 100,000 people, whole zombies. So that was the only answer. They thought it was going to be a huge spread, but luckily it stayed within Raccoon City. Or did it? <laughs> and thus, leading to Resident Evil 4. So we'll give some history on this. Not too much of it, though, but... Well, yeah, so, basically, this happened six years after the events of Resident Evil 2, so basically after the whole nuke of Resident Evil 6, I mean Resident Evil, not Resident Evil 6, <laughs> Resident Evil 2, so, basically, Leon was uh, promoted to become one of the secret services for the president, kind of like a, you know, like, Secret Service is sort of thing, bodyguard. And thus, having on his first day as Secret Service, the President's daughter, Ashley Graham, gets abducted, abduct, abduct, uh, kidnapped by some sort of mysterious cult. So this is this is where the Resident Evil 4 comes in. Now this has a whole brand new thing. The T-Virus is not in this game. And we'll probably go through that as we play through. Un unraveling the story of Resident Evil 4. So keep in mind that again, this isn't a direct correlation. I'll tell you, when characters appear, I'll let you know if that's a brand new character or if they're a previous character. So Again, guys, I hope you enjoy Resident Evil 4 as we go into the journey to see what happened to Ashley Graham. So, it will explain a bit to the beginning on kind of the events of Resident Evil 4 and before that, just a brief. And now we have a rather unfortunate turn of events. It seems that the President and the Federal Council have passed judgment over the civilians of Raccoon City. The President and Federal Council have ruled that the Backless Terminate operation is the best course of action for this extreme situation and have since executed. Based on that fact, Raccoon City has been literally wiped off the map. Current reports have the death toll surpassing the 100,000 mark. Our hearts go out to those poor civilians of Raccoon City. So, anyways, guys, hope you enjoy Resident Evil 4 as much as I do, and uh, yeah, we'll see you for the next episode of Resident Evil 4.